so this is going to be a very interesting conversation for some uncomfortable for others but we're going to talk about christianity and money so if you guys are new to my channel you probably don't know my backstory but um i grew up in a very poor family my dad works at mcdonald's he only works two days out of the week i have never seen this check more than 120 dollars and my mom um she's a teacher so you can only imagine the type of money i've seen in life and i missed out on a lot of events i missed out on prom i remember for graduation my heels were very tiny because we couldn't afford to get new heels um i just i missed out on a lot in life because we did not have the finances and when you grow up in that kind of environment you tend to hoard you tend to have a very strong and i mean strong poverty mindset all in your life so this year god made it evident to me the way i was thinking and he corrected me on that so i felt led to purge my closet and i came ac across these two headsets the headsets are old one of the ears are working one of the ears are not working but i kept those two headsets around because I bought new pairs and my logic was, okay, well, when my new pairs break, then I'm going to get one of these headsets that I've been holding on to so I can have backup headsets. I didn't realize it back then, but God showed me, do you not realize that's a poverty mindset? When you're hoarding things, even though it's broken, even though it's outdated, even though it served this purpose, even though the shoes have holes in it, you're still holding on to it because you you feel like you won't be able to replace this item. That's a poverty mindset. And when I was hoarding my closet, I, I found so many items in there that I've had since high school, middle school. I've had documents that I've had for a long time, items. And God really exposed that poverty mindset that I was dealing with. And before that, God started speaking to me about luxury and abundance. And he was saying, listen, you deserve luxury things. You deserve to have the finer things in life. You deserve to go to five-star restaurants. You deserve to experience what it's like to have money. And not because I've been through a lot, not because I've, I've never been exposed to that kind of life previously, but because a lot of believers, we were taught wrong when it comes to money. We were taught, oh, if we see, a, a, if we see somebody with a lot of money, they're evil and they sacrifice things to get that money and da da da. But God gives wealth as well. God gives children wealth. And I was talking to my friend the other day and I was telling her, girl, these churches are lying to people. They, they, they beat in their brains. You need to tithe. You need to tithe. You need to tithe. If you tithe, oh, God is going to open so many prosperous doors for you. But newsflash, I know some people, you know some people, you probably one of those people who, listen, you done tithe all your life and you have never seen six figures. You have never seen $50,000. You have never seen $30,000. Tithing is not the answer to wealth. A lot of these people don't tell you that it, it takes a lot. Because when God gives you the million dollar idea, there is a process to that. It takes sacrifice. It takes obedience. It takes judgment. It takes humiliation because let me tell you something. If you listen to a lot of Christian millionaires, a lot of them went through foreclosures, repossessions, bankruptcies. Listen to Dave Ramsey. Listen to Anthony O'Neill. Listen to Patricia um, Patrice. Um, listen to um, the Bajanista. Listen to Christian 
millionaires who 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 been through some stuff. Okay, it, it's a process. But the main thing that God has been teaching me is that you have to value wisdom more than money. I'm reading this book right now. It's called The Richest Man in Babylon. So many nuggets in this book, but this book, I mean, this book says this. This is the main thing. I have been listening to Uncle Reese lately. If you don't know who Uncle Reese is, about 10 years ago, he came out with a song called Until I Pass Out. And that's the person that God has me listening to in this season. And, and he talks about accountability. He gives us wisdom of his experience in the industry, his experience with friends, what it was like when he got saved, life after he got saved. So he's speaking to us from wisdom. But the other day he said the same thing. You have to value wisdom more than money because wisdom got him to where he is now. And in the book, it gives an example of how Arkard, Arkard is one of the characters in the book, how he went to a bread maker for advice about jewelry and he lost out on that deal. He lost money. So basically, we learn that when you want to be successful in that area, you need to connect to someone who is successful, who is an expert in that area. If you want to start a business, you need to speak to someone who is an expert in that business. If you want financial wisdom, you need to ask God to connect you with people who are experts when it comes to finances. And um, this question, I was listening to Anthony O'Neill and he posed this question. He said, which would you rather choose? Would you rather take $100,000 or would you take a conversation with Bill Gates? Bill Gates is a billionaire. Me personally, I would switch out Bill Gates for someone else, but I would take that one-on-one -on -one conversation and that partnership with that person than the money. Because let's look at lottery winners. A lot of these people, they won the money unexpectedly. So when you obtain wealth out of the sudden and you are prepared for it, you lose. You lose that money quicker than it came in. And some of the people, they're broker now than they were before they became a millionaire. But you need to value wisdom. Because someone who does not have wisdom, they would take that money and just spend it. it they would probably spend that money in a month. They would probably buy them a car. They would probably buy them a home. Which is nothing wrong with it. You're going to pay it off in full. Completely nothing wrong with it. But an expert would have probably told you, okay, let's say you were given $500,000. First off, this is biblical. All the experts tell you this. Get out of debt. Make that a number one priority. Get out of debt. And then work on the vision that God has given you. And then some experts would probably tell you, okay, this is how you invest your money. You need to, you know, put your money towards this, put your money towards that, put your money towards, you know. So they would tell you what to do with that money so that you can make income, you can make passive income, you can make, uh, you can basically create a life for yourself where the money is now coming to you consistently. So when you speak to an expert, they will set you up for success. So this book is a really good book for just financial wisdom. It talks about different things. Um, one of the things they tell you not to do is do not fear giving money and do not hoard. <laughs> so it was so funny seeing that in here. But back to luxury things. I was listening to Albert Tate and he has this segment on the weekends, not on the weekends, on the weekdays called Good News Today. And normally I don't really listen, I don't really tune in, but on this one I was listening. And he was like, someone needs to hear this, but take the limits off of God. 
God is not a cheap God. So stop asking him for little things. Stop being cheap. Because there's a lot of things in life that you can't buy cheap. And you can't ask God for the big things and then slap a cheap price on top of it. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> Again, a lot of us were taught. Oh, like, I'll just ask God for this little thing. You know, it, it, as long as I have something, you know. That's false humility. If you want something, ask for it. But don't allow these items to take over you. Because even though we ask God for nice things, for luxury things, we always keep God the center of our lives. We always have the heart of humility and servanthood and obedience and walking out with God. Because the root of the, the love of money is the root of all evil, but when we are living for God, we should be able to witness to people and tell people, God gave me this. In Colossians 1, it, it says that whatever we do, we give thanks and honor unto the Lord. So when people say, oh, I like your bag, you can say, thank you. The Lord blessed me with this. Or if someone comes into your home and says, wow, your home is so breathtaking, you can say, thank you. God bless me with this home. As believers, we should be able to say that. Oh, how did you get out of debt? Oh, God bless me. Do you know that we live in a world right now, and right here on YouTube, there are a lot of people who are saying they're wealthy because of the law of attraction, they're wealthy because of manifestation, they're wealthy because the universe gave it to them, they're wealthy because of X, Y, and Z. But as believers, we should be able to say that too. Because someone on the outside looking in, if you're talking about your God and you're struggling, you can't even make ends meet, that person is not going to receive what you have to say. Because sometimes people, they're visual. They, they don't learn by hearing. They have to see your life to see... God gave you all this? God bless you with this? Yeah. And we were taught in the church, oh, you can't have nice things when a, when a guest speaker comes to the church and they have nice things. They get frowned down upon and things like that. But you have to get rid of that poverty mindset. And recently, I was led to a video. Um, I really forgot her name. But she was talking about what is hindering you from receiving your financial blessing. And she was talking about the spirit of poverty and the spirit of lack. So she gave an example. Let's say that God supernaturally takes debt out of your life. So now you're 100% debt free. If you go back to that poverty mindset, if you go back to that lack mindset, lack would tell you, oh, you don't have no more money. You need to go swipe your credit card or you need to go take out a loan at the bank. See, if you don't change your mindset, you're gonna get yourself back into debt. You're gonna get yourself back into financial trouble. So it's mindset at the end of the day because before God blesses you, you have to seek wisdom about it first. You have to heal first. Because a premature blessing can come as a curse. Whenever you are believing God for something, if you're believing God for a job, you need to do research about, okay, God, when I, when I start working and when I start um, obtaining money, what is it that you want me to do with this money? How do you want me to steward this money? Lord, teach me your ways. Teach me your wisdom. And God will teach it to you. It also says that in Colossians 3. No, it says that in James 1. Sorry. It says that if you don't know something, ask God for wisdom and he will freely give it to you. So if you need wisdom about it, ask God. Ask God. Make that a priority. But 
don't be afraid to ask God for big things. Don't be afraid to 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 experience the luxury life. Because a lot of Christians they're so closed minded and they think, oh, we we can't have nice things. Look at Jesus. Jesus was homeless. Jesus didn't have a home. Jesus. Da, da, da. First of all, that's not biblical. If you look throughout scripture, it says a man who cannot provide for his own home is useless. <laughs> and it says a man who does not work will not have money, will not be able to feed his family. It says we are to be like ants. Ants work hard. If you ever looked at ants, they don't stop working. You put a crown outside, you will see how many ants will come one by one, picking that crumb to pieces. They work. I have never seen ants just stop and take a break. They work. Ants are workers. And it said we should not be sluggards. Because when harvest time comes, <laughs> if you sleep during winter, you will not receive anything during spring. All of these things are biblical. So, you know, <laughs> change your mindset when it comes to God. Don't be afraid to ask him for big things. God has recently introduced me to a book called um, Imagine Big. And the author's name is Terry Foy. And she gave an example in the very beginning of the book. She was with someone and he said, Ugh, that's a big house. I don't see how anybody can da, da, da. And then God told him, don't worry, because you will never have a home like that. <laughs> that would have hurt. Like, <laughs> What do you mean I can't have a house like that? But his his limiting mindset, that what was the problem. And a lot of us, and I know for me for years, I was settling a lot. I was settling and I refused to seek wisdom about money. And I remember multiple jobs that I had where I would only spend my money on makeup and food because I grew up in a poverty home where my parents secretly taught me about money even though they didn't realize they were teaching me how to handle money and how to think towards money. I wasn't taught how to steward money. So when I got financial aid, guess what I spent it on? Food. Because I was taught in my household, go buy food before you go pay groceries. I mean, before you pay bills. I grew up with my mom constantly begging for money where they will buy something waste their money and then they will beg people for money to go pay a bill I grew up seeing that so of course I didn't know how to properly handle money this was back in 2013. I don't really know if there was anything out there. And beyond 2013, every time um, when I was younger, I would get $100 for Christmas. I went straight to the mall, and I think I would buy food. I think I would buy clothes and food. But <laughs> the point is, seek wisdom. Seek wisdom. God honors when you seek wisdom and start doing something. When, when he sees you're trying to do something, he will reward you for it. I remember there was a season of my life where I couldn't pay my credit card bill. I couldn't pay the minimum that they were asking me for, so I, I paid a dollar. Sometimes I paid a cent, like eight cents, but I was consistent with that. I was consistent with that. And my credit would go up. <laughs> my credit would go up. And it was big numbers too. Not only did it go up, but it was big numbers too. And I know any financial expert would look at that like, huh? What? But when God sees that you're, you're doing the best that you can and you're working with what you have, he honors that and he will reward you for that. So if you yourself are, are struggling with a poverty mindset, go to God about that because God has so much for you. And don't allow your mindset to limit what he has for you. Don't be afraid as a believer to believe big things for your life. Especially if you know you're living for Christ. Especially if you know you've been through some things on this walk. Especially if you are a remnant. Especially if you've been through a lot. It's, it's, it's not a crime to ask God for nice things. But always keep a, a heart of meekness. 
of humility, of kindness, of servi servitude, Just killing your flesh daily, dying to self, keeping God first, and never think that you're better than anybody. When God puts you in these places, when you when He has you rub arms with people who got wealth, and they take you to these five star restaurants, and you're living in a luxury neighborhood, and you're driving a nice car, don't forget God, and don't put Him second. Don't put Him third. Don't put Him fourth. Don't put Him fifth. Always keep God first. Always. Keep God first. And you will see God honor you and honor what you have to say. But when you ask God for these things, ask for wisdom. That is the most important thing. Ask God for wisdom. God, how do I get these things? Show me. What is it that I need to cut out? What is it that I have to let go? Is it physical? Is it mental? Is it emotional? What is it that I have to let go in order to get these things? And Lord, help me to always be humble. Help me to always to have the heart to serve others and to never believe for a minute that I'm better than people just because of what I have. Lord, help me to have the heart of Jesus. Help me to see your people how you see them. So always keep God in the center. So I hope you guys have a blessed day and be blessed. Bye.